Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another quick Flutter tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to code an e-commerce app like this sneaker shop I coded up where the user can browse through the shoes for sale and add them to the cart. The user can also, of course, remove items from the cart. So let me show you how to do this by jumping into the code. So I've opened up a brand new Flutter project and you should just get this demo Flutter app. So what I'm going to do is the first thing is to prepare some images we might need. So I've got that in this folder and I've got four different shoes and also a Nike logo. So I just got this off the internet. So make sure to just prepare some images and go to your project library and let's drag this image folder in. So let's come back to our project and tell the pub spec YAML if you scroll down, you can see the assets. So just comment this out and tell it to import some images in. Cool, so now everything below the main function, I'm just gonna delete and let's create this from scratch. So let's create the, our, our material app and for the home page, the first thing I wanna display is actually the intro page. So let's create a new folder called pages and create intro page. And so this will just be that nice greeting message at the beginning. So let's make sure to import this. Cool. Now for the background color, I'm gonna go for a bit of a light gray as opposed to a completely white background. And in the body of the column, we're going to have the logo at the top. And let's just have a bit of information, like some text on the bottom. And a button so that the user can enter the app. So starting with the logo, this is just going to be our image. So this one right here. Now we can control the height of this image. And also let's make sure to center the column. Cool. And maybe we could add some padding around this as well. Sweet. Now let's use some sized boxes. So this will just be some empty space. And below that, let's have a title. So let's say, just do it. Now this one, I want to make a little bit bolder and bigger and create some more space and for the subtitle let's say something else like brand new sneakers and custom kicks made with premium quality and this doesn't have to be bold it can be a bit smaller and maybe let's make it gray cool and also let's center this alignment And I'm just going to add some padding on the sides here. There we go. Cool. Now the last thing is the start now button. So this one I'm just going to create using containers. And let's say like shop now. And let's create a bit of a dark button. Now that means our text should be white. And let's, of course, curve the corners here. Cool. Now this is looking really good. Now let's just go to this container and wrap it in a gesture detector. And if the user taps this button, then let's navigate to a new page. So we're going to go to home page, which we haven't created yet. Now for this column, I'm going to space this out. Now I'm just going to comment this out for a second. And if I save this, you can see it's spaced out nicely. So now let's create our home page. And import it. Cool. So now we should have a blank app inside. So far so good. So now in the scaffold, the first thing I'm going to do is to create the bottom navigation bar. So I'm actually going to import a 
Google navbar. And I've made separate tutorials for this one, so check that out if you need. But I think this one looks pretty modern. So I'm going to create this in a separate folder called components. So let's call it my bottom nav bar, and it's going to be the G nav. There it is. And so for the tabs, I'm going to have pretty much two tabs. So the first G button is going to be home or shop, let's call it. And the other one is going to be the cart. Okay, so now we can go to the bottom navigation bar here and import this. Sweet, so you can see there it is at the bottom. Now let's just decorate this up a little bit. So it's gray there for the unselected options. And if it's selected, then make the gray bit darker. Also, let's have a bit of a border here. And fill in the colors. Cool. Which reminds me the background color of the home page. Let's make it the same light gray. Cool. Now, one thing I like doing with this one is the main axis alignment to be in the center. I actually like this in the middle because we only have two options anyway. Cool. And let's just add some padding. And the border radius seems very round. So you can make this a little sharper if you like. Yeah, I like that kind of squared off look a little bit better. Sweet. Now the main thing here is really the on tab changed value. So this function, right? Let's just copy it to the top and require it. Right? So if you come back to the home page, we should have a red squiggle because we have to fill out this on tab change. So for this, I'm just going to change this to index. Now this is just basically for navigating the bottom bar. So let's try to create the, create the stuff up here. Now the first thing is I need to have a integer to keep track of the selected index, right? So starting at zero, let's have a method to update our selected index, right? So zero for the home and one for the cart. So with a given index, let's just update it using a quick set state. Cool, so now that we've got that taken care of, we need to have some pages that we can navigate between, right? So the first thing is a shop page, which we haven't created. And the second one is the cart page, which we also haven't created. So let's do that now. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create some text in the middle. Just so I can see this working. Okay, so if I save this and it looks like it's not showing and that's because we have to give it to the body. So now if you give the pages to your body, you can see now we go from shop to cart. So everything is set up nicely. So now we can just fill out in the shop page file. Now, just before we do that though, let's fill out one last sort of setting up, which is if I create an app bar here for the leading, I want to have a drawer icon. So like a menu icon. There it is. If I press this, I want to open up the drawer. So the background color for this, I actually want it to be transparent, elevation also zero. So I basically don't want to see an app bar, but I do want to see that menu icon. So if you want to open up the drawer, you can say scaffold of context, open drawer, and just create a blank drawer here. So let's try this out. So it looks like we have a bit of an error. And that's because we should wrap this button in a builder. 
Okay, sweet. So there it is. There's our drawer. So now we can start decorating this drawer. So this one I want to make a bit darker and let's have a column of like the logo and some other pages we can go to. Cool. And if you didn't know, you can actually change the color of an image, which I'm going to do. And let's create a quick divider here. So this one's just a a line. That's all it is. Cool. And believe, uh, beneath this, we can now create other pages. So let's just create some list tiles here. And so we can have a home tab. Just create some padding. And everything is dark, so let's just make this white. And we can copy this and maybe create just a couple more. So this one is going to be highly dependent on your app, right? Like what, what pages you want your app to include. So I'll just show you how to sort of set this up and then you can decide on what, what buttons you want here. So I'm just going to have these three buttons. So home, about and logging out. Now I want the logging out at the very bottom. So I'm going to wrap everything on the top in another column. And then let's space out this entire overall column. Cool. So that way we can push the log out to the bottom. So let me know or comment below if you have any questions. I'm happy to come and explain this in more detail if you need. Okay, so now we can come back to the shop page and start filling this out. So again, let's have a bit of a a bit of a plan. On the top of my column, I want a search bar, and then I want a bit of a kind of nice message, and then the hot picks, which is the list of shoes. So for the search bar, I'm not actually going to incorporate the functionality of a search bar here, but let's just include it anyway because we might need it later on. And building UIs with Flutter is just so fun. Make sure to curve these borders. Okay, so that's the search bar. And then underneath, I just want to have a little message here. I saw this at a Nike shop before. I thought it was pretty cool. I think it's like a Michael Jordan quote. But yeah, everyone flies, some fly longer than others. Just a nice, cute little message. Okay, finally, now for the main part of this entire app is this hot pics. So let's put in some text first. I'm going to put in a fire emoji and make this um, have the see all option as well on the side and let's change up the style. Now for the see all, I think this one could be like blue. Yeah. Sweet. Now underneath these, We can now have a list of shoes. Cool. So I want to use an expanded list to fill up the rest of the space. And we're going to return a shoe tile, which I'm going to create now in my components. So basically a shoe tile, I just want like a kind of card to display the shoe and the price and all that stuff. So. Let's try that now. Now with a given shoe, we should be able to 
fill out the shoe tile. Now, this is a good time for us to actually create the models. So let's go to our library and create a folder called models. And what models is, is, is basically say the first one is going to be shoe.dart. So that's the main sort of product for our app. And so we can create a class for a shoe. And what do different shoes have? So the different shoes have a different name, different price, they have a different image and also a different description. So let's create the constructors for this so that we can create it in other places. Cool, so now we can import this shoe tile. So with a given shoe, So let's create a container here and let's just add some margin to the left hand side because I don't want to stuck on the left side of the screen. Cool. And for the child, I'm going to create a column and for a bit of a plan, let's say I want to have a shoe picture and then the description underneath and then the price below that and also a button to add the cart. So let's start with the image of the shoe picture. That should just be with a given shoe, we can get the image path of that shoe. So let's actually come back to the shop page and pass through this shoe. Okay, so what I mean is we can create a new shoe here. Right, so in the list view builder, when we go through the index, starting from zero to however many shoes we have. We can go through the image file. So just as an example, we can create a shoe here and give this shoe to our shoe tile. So if I just save this, by the way, if it's not loading, forgot to do the item count here. So just say like four and the scroll direction, I actually want to change it from vertical to horizontal. And it looks like something on the top corners look a little weird. I think it might be because of the image. Let's wrap this image in a clip R rect to curve the corners. Now for the description, this goes shoe description. And this one can be kind of gray. Okay, now for the bottom part of the shoe tile, I'm going to create a row. And a column at the beginning, which contains the name and then the price below that. So let's just save this as we go along. Now you see that plus button, I want to go to the row and say space between to push it to the end. And then here, yeah, let's see in the column, let's do the same thing. Now for the plus button, I want to wrap it in a container because I want to kind of give it some color. So in the decoration, let's say black, which means my plus button should be white. And I want to sort of use a border radius, but only for the top left and bottom right. Yeah, that's the kind of look I want to go for. And now looking at the left hand side, let's align this to the start and space this out a little bit and change up the style so the name of the shoe should be much bigger
And let's add padding just to the left hand side. Okay, and also let's align the cross axis alignment to the start. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Now I'm just going to add a quick divider at the bottom just to just to give us some space. Cool, so now it's time for us to create a new model called cart. So I'm going to create a class here and just a bit of a plan again we want a list of shoes that are for sale we want the list of items that the user put in the cart and then a couple of methods so a couple of get methods so getting the list of shoes for sale and getting what's in the cart and then what the user can manipulate is adding items to the cart as well as removing items from the cart so this should be the functionality of the app. So starting with the shoe shop, it should be a list of shoes. I'm just going to create the four different shoes that we have. Okay, so the Zoom Freak. Let's say the price is 236. And then for the description, I'm just getting this off the Nike website, but you can put in, you know, any bit of text here. And the image path is where our shoe is. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and fill this out for the four different shoes that we've got. So we've got the Air Jordans, um, the Zoom Freak, which we started with, then the Kyrie and KD Tray. So, yep, let me just go ahead and fill this out. Cool. Now... The list of items in the user's cart. So again, this is also a list of shoes. And for the user cart, it'll be just blank at the beginning, nothing in the cart. And then we can also get the shoe list. So let's just return the shoe shop. And we can also get the user cart. So let's just return the user cart. And for the two methods that the user can manipulate is adding an item to the cart, which we would need to know which shoe that they're adding. And then also, same thing for the removing. So let me know if you have any problem understanding any bit of this code. Just comment below, I can help you out. Now, I'm going to come back to my pubspec.yaml and I'm going to import this package called provider, which is a very simple common state management in Flutter. So I'm just going to do the sort of setting up here. So in the main function, let's wrap this in the change notifier provider. And coming back to the cart model, let's extend the change notifier and also notify the listeners anytime we need to update the state. Cool. So we need this to sort of deal with having a lot of different states in a few different pages, like the cart as well as the shop page. So, so if you come to our shop page, we can now wrap everything in a consumer. So that we can consume the data so if you look at this value we can say okay coming to the list builder here this one right here we kind of manually input it in right so what i'm going to do is instead of this part let's get value let's get the shoe list let's look at the index okay and the index is going from zero to the item count that was specified cool and there it is one thing I can just see in the shoe tile, I should add some padding here. Wait, now this plus button, we need to make it clickable. So let's wrap this in a gesture detector. Sweet, now if I come back to my shoe tile, we have a on tap function. So let's add shoe to cart and let's give it an individual shoe. So we haven't created this method. So let's come to the top and let's create the adding the shoe to cart method. So we've created it. We just need to access it using our provider. So you can see here the add item to cart and then we can just give it the shoe.
Now, one thing sort of good uh, user experience is you should let the user know something happened. So if you added it to the cart, let's just create a show dialog and say successfully added. Okay, so let's check this out. Yay, there it is. Cool, and then now if I come back to my cart, we should display it here. So let's go to your cart page. And let's use a consumer. And we're going to create a column here. So let's just have a bit of a heading here that says my cart. And then below that, after some space, let's have an expanded list view. So expanded will just fill up the rest of the space. And in the list view, let's do something similar. Let's get each shoe and return the cart item. So we can get the individual shoe from the user cart. Okay, and return the cart item. So this one, I'm going to actually separate out the code in a different file. I'm just gonna create it in my components. And so the cart item, when given a shoe, let's create a little tile here to display in the cart page. So I'm just going to use a list tile again. And for the leading, let's put in a little image of the shoe. Okay, and also let's display the shoe name and also the price underneath it. Okay, so if I save this, I can add it. And it looks like we have a bit of an error and that's because we didn't do an item count. So let's get the user's cart and just the length of the user's cart. Cool, and you can see if I add it like in the cart, we have it. So if I add another shoe, then we have it in the cart as well. So there it is. Now let's just decorate this up real quick. Add some margin and the border radius. Those are the main things that I like to decorate. Cool, now one thing is I need to change this cross axis alignment. I need to add a deleting button. So in the trailing of this list tile, let's add in a icon button. And we need to allow the user to remove this item from the cart, right? So let's create this method. Well, oh, this one needs to go in an icon. Cool, so let's use a provider and access our method that we created before. and give it the shoe. And there it is, there's our delete button. So now we can delete. So we can add, and we've got the shoes here, and we can also remove them. Cool, and so that's the basic functionality that's done. So I think the app aesthetically also looks pretty good. So let me know what you guys think. But from here, we can actually, we should be able to build this app further depending on whatever app you're trying to make if it's like an e-commerce style situation obviously it doesn't have to be shoes right it could be any any product that you're trying to sell right so that's pretty much all i had planned for this video if you made it this far into the tutorial good job and leave me a purple heart in the comment just so i know i'm gonna put this one as well as a bunch of other ui kits that i've been making on my gumroad so check it out if you need 
but play around with it and if you have any questions just leave me a comment below i'll try to come around and help out but thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace